Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today with you. In the middle of a hurricane, it's raining like crazy out and um, here in Rhode Island, and I'm hoping that we keep our power so we don't um, go down. So we'll, fingers crossed. So today we're gonna talk about portals. What are they? How do they come about? How do we know if we have one? How do they impact us if we're psychics and what do we do about them? Um, it's, it's a cool topic and I'm, <clears throat> I'm psyched to be talking about it today. Um, so what are they? They are, um, so our planet, our planet Earth is covered with uh, lines of energy, magnetic lines of energy. The really big ones are called ley lines and they're huge. They're sort of like the acupuncture meridians that um, cr cr crisscross our planet. And when they um, intersect, they create a little vortex of energy, like a little um, tornado of energy that um, we call vortexes or portals is another word for them. Um, and when they're, they have the bigger the ley lines are and the more ley lines that cross in one place, the bigger the vortex is. And we also have smaller ones. So there's really big ley lines and then there's smaller ones. The smaller ones are called Hartman lines and they're about six feet apart. Um, and so if you live in a house and you, you can think about, um, you know, every six feet or so, there's one of these lines, magnetic lines running through your property, through your whole um, through your house and through your whole property. <clears throat> now, the issue with them is that wherever they are, big or small, and I'm going to tell you how to find out if you've got them in your house and where they are, is that if we were to stand in one and use a pendulum, so I really like using a pendulum for this kind of thing, um, you put your pendulum down if you find a vortex you, and some of them will spin in a clockwise way and some of them will spin in a counterclockwise way here in the northern hemisphere and that would be reversed actually if you're in the southern hemisphere. So the ones that spin in a clockwise way are called or considered to be positively charged portals or vortexes. The ones here in the northern hemisphere that spin um, counterclockwise are negatively charged ones, but it's not, I don't want you to think about the negative and positive charge like good or bad because really they're, they're like electric. It's like the AC DC current you have in your house. Like one stream of energy is, has an extra proto, uh, proton or electron in it. And that's considered the positively charged one. And the other one has a, a minus one. And that would, that's what current, how current flows when we're dealing with electricity or energy, right? Um, so when we're dealing with portals, energy comes into the planet through uh, the positively charged ones, the, the counter, the clockwise ones here in the Northern Hemisphere. And so the positively charged ones are, and you can stick your pendulum right in the middle of one, to figure out which, what it's doing. This is where it's gonna be good to, um, build, like if you have a huge, one of those huge portals that um, many of the major ley lines are on and it's got a positive spin on it, um, that's where people build temples, churches, healing centers, right? And the really, um, the big ones, if you've got a negatively charged one that's going anti-clockwise, energy drains out of the world. And that's a great place to put a cemetery or, um, you know, things that, that where we want the energy to leave. And, and it's so interesting because I'll notice like, if I just do like, I, I just for once did um, example, did the town, I used to live in this little town called Hopedale, Massachusetts. And I, I did the uh, little map and drew the ley lines found with my pendulum where they were and the, the town dump was on the, the biggest negatively charged one. The other one was a cemetery. And I feel like as humans, we understand, we sort of feel these things and we know um, what they're like and, when we're wise, we use the energy that's already in existence. Also find the, the larger um, negatively charged ones also are very often on swampy land. So swamps are an excellent thing to have on top of this, um, you know, uh, a, a negatively charged vortex. So honestly, many of the stone circles are built on top of these portals. We can call them portals, we can call them vortexes, whatever you want. Um, and they tend to be soft spots between our world and the next world. Some portals are um, soft spots between the world of, of nature spirits and fairies will come through them. And some portals are more um, 
tuned towards the astral plane, you know, and the astral plane is where you would get stuck dead people coming through there. Um, and I, there's a really interesting story that I, um, that I heard recently when I was talking to, uh, to somebody who's an expert on cryptids. So cryptids are Bigfoot and, you know, werewolves and, and strange creatures that people see, you know, and that, and what he told me, which uh, uh, seemed really true to me, was that their astral plane, or they come from a different, slightly different dimension than we do, that is next to our dimension, but not exactly part of our dimension, and they come through these portals. Hi, Marty. And they come into our world, and so they're sometimes when the, the veil is thin between our world in a certain time, a certain time of the year, a certain time of the day, um, in a certain place, the portal is really thin and we can, our world overlap slightly. And that's why we, oh, we can see a UFO. We can see um, a, um, a cryptid like uh, the Jersey Devil or um, the little, little Hobgoblins or something bigger like Bigfoot. But why we never find, um, you know, why we never find like um, carcasses of these beings is because they, they're they interdimensional and they're not existing in the same dimension we are. And the portals is how they cross over, okay? So what does that mean for us and as psychics, right? Um, hi, everybody. Oh, so thank you for saying hi. Um, you can find the Hartman um, lines in your own house. And the way that I recommend that you um, do that is you take a piece of paper and you draw the outline of your property. So draw both the property and your house. And I do it kind of in a rough way. Although a friend of mine who's really good at this does, um, he takes a picture from Google Maps, you know, the like the aerial view you can get of Google Maps from your property. And if you print that, you take it and you print it out on your printer and draw the property line, you get a really accurate map of your house and your property. And then what you do is you take your pendulum. You could also use dowsing rods, but I, um, hi Jane, hi Patricia. Um, I like to use a pendulum and you run your pendulum along. Um, when I did my house, just so I just moved recently and I was, I just did this a couple of days ago because I was thinking about this topic. So I have my whole property and I run my pendulum along the property line and kind of real slow, right? And I wait till it swings. And when it swings in a direct, it'll swing kind of in a direction like that. I take my pen and I draw the line across the map. <clears throat> and then I go back to where I was, back to that point, And I go, oh, there's another one that's going that way. So I draw a line that way. And you go all the way slowly, slowly through your whole map. And you draw the lines that you see when the pendulum's swinging. And till you get across, till you get back to your starting point. And generally, what you'll see is this sort of, crisscross of lines that are about six feet apart. These are the Hartman lines. Sometimes you'll have underground water will show up. Um, if you have that underground water is, is very magnetic and attractive to spirits and often end up being a spirit highway. Um, and where the lines crisscross is gonna be a portal. And if it's just two lines crisscrossing, it's a really small portal. Probably not something you have to worry about too much, but if you get three lines crossing, it's a bigger one. If you get four lines crossing, you got a bigger one. If you got five lines crossing, you got a major portal. Okay. And then what you want to do is you take your, wherever you get the crisscross lines, you take your pendulum again and you stick it in there, um, right on top of that crisscross and you see, does, does it, is it, does it stop dead? Then there's really no energy in it at all. And it's fine. Does it go clockwise in, in the Northern hemisphere? Then you've got a positively charged one. And if it goes counterclockwise, you've got a negatively charged one. That's how you figure out where they are in your house. Now, it's good to know this because you really don't want to have your bed, for example, on one that's a negatively charged one. You're not going to sleep well. You're going to have nightmares. Um, in fact, Dr. Hartman, who came up with this technique, um, was a dowser and he did something called geomancy, which is like understanding the energy in, of the earth. There's lots of people who are experts in this. Um, and what he found was that he was in Germany and he um, was curious because he had a family that all had this really rare type of brain cancer and the same point of their head. And he wanted to know why they had it. It was very rare um, and all throughout this like every generation somebody would have it. And when he went to their house, he realized that their head, that where their bed was, was on top of this negatively charged portal. And anyone who slept in that bed got sick, right? So 
it was a major one. He said, and he's he did a lot of research and work. You can look him up. It's really interesting stuff. So you don't want to have your healing room or your Reiki table on top of a negatively charged one or spend a lot of time there. But it's a good post place to put your compost bin, <laughs> put your trash cans, you know, but things like that. And um, you, and I'm I'm telling you, you'll find like if you have one, that that's the room that people don't really want to go in or every there's always that one room or that one corner or that one place in your house where, where clutter collects tends to collect around these negatively charged portals. So we want to take care of them. Now, um, there's a couple of other things to consider when we're talking about portals. Sometimes we can't create a portal when something really bad happens in a particular space. These are called high impact trauma points. And it could be a room or a place on your property where somebody died, for example. Um, these places can have an incredibly negative charge after a big traumatic event, something like the scene of a battle, you know, or a crime, a murder happened, suicide happened there, um, a street corner that's had a series of traffic ac accidents and, you know, that traffic light in your town or people sort of die, like there's going to be a negative portal there, even if there wasn't before. And part of the reason of this is because um, when when something like that happens, that energy kind of flashes out into the universe, into the material of the, the cement, the trees, the walls, the rugs. And when blood is spilled, um, um, we're going to talk about mirrors in a minute, but yes, that's a good thing. When blood is spilled somewhere, especially in a negative way like that, and it isn't cleaned up, prop cleaned up. I don't mean you'll have the crime scene people come in and clean it up. I mean, spiritually cleaned up blood like that can open a portal and it always opens a negative portal or a portal to the other side, a portal to the astral plane, right? So blood is really a powerful psychic material. It, um, it, it holds the psychic imprint and the life force imprint of the person that whose blood it was. And, you know, this is why people use blood in rituals, blood, you know, as human sacrifice, <laughs> that opens a portal and um in not a good way you know um when especially when it's life blood or heart's blood like like the blood of of somebody who passed away um and this kind of blood needs to get spiritually cleaned up properly or and it really never does and that we you would have like a shaman or a priest come in or a holy person of some kind a feng shui practitioner who knows how to consecrate land and they use salt they use holy water they use prayer to um, release the stuck energy around blood spilled in an environment, right? Um, and these blood spills ones, as well as the negative, like the just the counter, the naturally occurring counterclockwise portals, will often create an entry point into the astral plane. Well, what's in the astral plane? It's it's a tricky dimension. It's the dimen It's one dimension removed from us. I always see it. Um, over on the right hand side, and I see the, the the fairy people on the on the left hand side. I don't know. It's just the way that I perceive things. <clears throat> and what we might get in some parts of the astral plane are fine. Other parts, it's like the not so nice neighborhood in the psychic world. So we might see stuck dead people there. We might have um, lower astral entities, these sort of parasitic um, entities that live there. And um, many newbie psychics get there when they first open up because they don't know how to raise their vibration far enough to lift up out of the astral plane. And things like the Ouija board takes you there. So if you play with a Ouija board, it's going to open a portal to the lower ast to the astral plane and particularly the lower astral, which is not good. And that's why <clears throat> that's why you know all the reasons why it's not good, right? It sort of takes you to the bad neighborhood of the astral plane. Um, and sometimes that stuff comes through. Um, also, if you're if you are a medium or um, doing a lot of energy work or psychic work, you've got to be careful because opening the where you do it. So this is my home office. I do a lot of psychic work here, and I work really hard to clean up the um, to close the portals because I open them every day to do the work that I do. And if I don't close them down behind me, my house feels a little haunted after a while, right? So that's another time we can have a portal. The other place we have portals is mirrors, to, to Patricia's point, okay? So mirrors can be very psychically active. Sometimes they can become portals. Um, the story that I heard was that if a mirror 
witnesses a bad thing happening, like if the mirror's kind of in a room or some tragedy happens, somebody dies, there's murder, suicide, trauma, um, it can, um, the mirror itself can create a portal. And so if you have a mirror, especially antique mirrors, you wanna get your pendulum and put your pendulum in front of the mirror. And you just ask, you know, set the intention, can I see what's, if this mirror is a portal? Chances are very good, nothing will happen. If you go to Target and you buy a mirror today and you put a pendulum on it, it's gonna sit flat, nothing's gonna happen. Um, but if you've had one in your house for a while or you have an antique mirror, antique mirrors, give me the wiggies. I don't really like that. In fact, I don't have a lot of mirrors in my house. I find them to be sort of uncomfortable for me. Um, and mirrors by their nature can just be portals to the other side so any mirror you have that you know you want to go through your house and just put that if it's not doing anything it's fine if it's spinning in a positive way it's probably fine if it's spinning in a negative way we're going to close the portal which i'm going to teach you how to do and to um patricia's point mirrors facing each other are not a great idea and I know better, but when I moved into this house, I set up my daughter's room and I it just, it just, she's got this old antique um, from the 1920s art deco antique bed set and it's gorgeous. And I, it just fit the room so that the vanity mirror was facing the, um, uh, the mirror on her dresser and her bed was right in the middle. And she's like, I don't sleep good in there, mom. I just like, uh, you know, and I'm uneasy in there. I just feel like people are watching me and everything. And I was like, huh, I wonder what's going on. And um, I was, my, a friend of mine was like, Lisa, like two mirrors facing each other with a bed in the middle. What are you crazy? You know better, like clean that up. So we moved, we had to move the furniture around and take her bed out and, and have the mirrors not face each other and then shut down. There were a little portally, those mirrors. So we had to shut them down. So um, there are people I know who won't stand between two mirrors or feel very uncomfortable doing that because, um, you know, um, it, feel, it feels like we can kind of get sucked into the mirror. Um, does table tipping take you to the astral plane too? I really think, Marty, it depends on who's doing it. So if you have a psychic who's um, really high vibration and is, um, you know, can lift themselves beyond that, I don't, I think you, you can set your intention to go right up to soul world or heaven and bring down the spirits that way. So I think it depends on what you're doing. You know, I wouldn't take like the ta do table tipping in the abandoned mental hospital on Halloween after you smoked a lot of weed and you were really depressed. <laughs> like that wouldn't be a good idea. Like don't do that. Um, but that's, um, you know, I think it depends on the intention we have and the skill of the person who's doing it. I'm sure there are many people who do table tipping who are not opening the astral. They're going up to soul world. Um, so, yeah, I've seen spirits. When I used to do house clearings, I did. I spent about 10 years doing house clearings in the early 90s, and that was a real adventure for me. And back then, I'm telling you, there was no paranormal TV shows. There was not a lot of information about this. I had no idea what I was doing. I was kind of young and stupid and um, and brave, and I had no idea what, or just I just was ignorant. I had no idea what I was walking into, but I learned a lot. And um, I learned a lot of really good psychic self-defense stuff. I also got really sick and had spirits follow me home and all the things that can happen when you do space clearing and you don't know what you're doing. Um, but I've seen actually spirits walk out of a mirror um, in, right in front of me. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, that's where you're coming from, right? Um, and then mirror, mirrors also can be used for feng shui. Feng shui practitioners use mirrors all the time. So positively charged mirrors, mirrors set with good intention, mirrors with, you know, with runes or spells on them can also be part of our arsenal or part of our toolkit when they're used in the appropriate way, okay? So like I said, so that's how I taught you how to find, once you're gonna check all your mirrors and you're gonna do this exercise. I also know people who use dowsing rods and they just set the intention. They walk, actually walk around their property, show me the portal and you know, you, you can, the dowsing rods will go like that it's, if it's okay or like that it's, if it's a portal. Um, and then, you know, you can use the dowsing rods the same way you use a pendulum to test for these things. And dowsers are good at finding portals. Dowsing is very cool. Um, you can douse with a pendulum or you can douse with dowsing rods, right? Um, so how do we close them? How do we clear them up? Um, now, 
sometimes we don't need to close them. It, the naturally occurring ones that aren't a problem, um, you're, you don't need to worry about. I, if you've got spirits around your house, you've got an issue. If you have a, a psychic child who is can attract things through the astral plane, and a psychic child or a psychic any age in a bedroom with a portal is going to create a lot of psychic activity in your house because psychics, especially children or really powerful psychics that haven't had a lot of training, like um, are, tend to be ghost magnets or spirit magnets. Psychics who are have mediumship ability and no training attract ghosts. Um, this When we're sleeping, it happens a lot because we light up the astral plane like a little light bulb when we're not aware, even aware of it, and we have our guard down because we're sleeping, right? So you really want to make sure you don't have a portal in your bedroom um, while you're sleeping because you just have a lot of spirit activity. Sometimes we'll have like a line of energy. And I, this one, well, a friend of mine had this in her house. It's like a spirit highway, um, and it cut through the corner of her bedroom and it and, and through the corner of her property. And it was like an old Native American trail that people used to walk. And it it was on a magnetic line on one of these ley lines, and it ended in this cemetery. So people sort of felt like they got up. Um, they got up and and would walk through like just spirit traffic and it, it sort of didn't have anything to do with her, but because she was aware and she could see them, um, she, she was hypersensitive to them and we, we kind of had to like divert the spirit highway around her house. So they weren't coming, walking through her place. Um, so Jane says, did you mention how to tell if a house or land has bloodshed with a pendulum? Yeah, you can use a pendulum. Was there bloodshed here? Was it cleaned up here? Can you show me where it was? You can also do some research on your house um, and just see if there's anything that shows up in the in a research about it, any murders, suicides, people dying in the home, um, you know, battles. <laughs> like, who knows what happens where? Um, Usually when the, with a blood thing, we feel it's, it's going to be very intense. The, there's going to be a lot more spirit activity and a lot more on the negative side of things. Okay. So what, if you find one, you want to close one. I, I, for the most part, find the natural ones. It's almost impossible to close them permanently. It's, it'd be like trying to shut down one of your energy meridians in your body or shut down permanently shut down one of your acupuncture points. Cause the, the porters are like, acupuncture points for the planet and it's not they're not meant to be um shut i mean if the ones that are created through blood spilled through black magic which is really impossible to clean up i have to tell you that's not an easy one but one spill that's been spilled by open by blood you can clean that up and close that portal but the naturally appearing ones are going to need to be shut down every 10 days to two weeks is what i find and so once you find it um you want to like uh, put some objects there. We're basically going to use feng shui techniques to close the portal. And you can look up more about that if you want to really research it. It's a fascinating topic. It's really cool. But you might put a crystal there. You might put a plant there. You might put a picture of Archangel Michael there. Um, some um, a water fountain will close. Running water closes portals. Um, negative spirits hate running water. They don't like it. So fish tanks fountains, all these things, plants, crystals, anything that brings life force energy, salt. You can salt that place, which is why salt lamps are very good. Um, a sprig of dried rosemary will sometimes keep a portal closed. A holly leaf, especially if it has berries on it, um, will also off, off and close a portal like that. So you can, if you have a mirror or another portal you want to close, you can take uh, oil, Rosemary essential oil. I mix mine with a little um, sage spray or a cr crumble up sage in it. Uh, you can make kind of like a like a concoction that um, of essential oils: lavender, lemon, rosemary, cypress, grapefruit, frankincense, sage, even peppermint oil are very good. This uh, very good for this. But I love rosemary. That's one of my favorites. So you put some oil on your finger, and you stand in front of the mirror or the portal. And you're going to make either, if you're Christian leaning, you can make the sign of the cross. If you're more on the pagan side of things, you can make the sign of a pentagram um, or um, any religious symbol. You could draw an ohm. You could do whatever feeling religious symbolism works for you. 
Um, and I like to call on the name of a higher power because it's like my will isn't as strong as if I call in Archangel Michael. You call in sort of the deity of your choice. It could be Allah, it could be Buddha, it could be Jesus, whatever resonates for you that fits with your faith tradition. In the name of deity of your choice, I close this portal, you know? Um, and and that should do it, right? Sometimes I just put an X, like like we're closed, you know? Um, I have a friend who uses turpentine. If you're from um, from the Portuguese tradition, turpentine works really well. Juniper essential oil works really well. And mix. you can mix it with holy water or whatever you, else you feel like it. Um, you can also close them with sage. So you can take sage, um, the, the trimmings of garlic, like the peels of garlic, which have a lot of sulfur in them. Um, you can throw some frankincense in there and uh, you burn it, right? And you use your feather to, to close. I close this portal, I close this portal. So basically we're using these high vibration things um, that and our intention plus the higher will to close them. But like I said, every two weeks, 10 days, a natural one's gonna open up. Um, the ones that are created through blood spilled, we can we have to do like a harder um, ceremony that's gonna really cleanse the space. and that's maybe where you want to hire a professional to help you have your house blessed by a religious person, a priest, a, um, a minister, a feng shui practitioner, and there are people who specialize in house clearing. So if you have like a really, a real, if you've had a real whammy, you may need a professional. And we have some actually good ones here on this, um, on this, in this group who are good at doing that. So. There you go, that's the basically everything I wanted to uh, tell you about portals. Good to know where they are. Um, also, it's like, if you have a negative one in your house, there's gonna be clutter there. Um, that You'll notice maybe that that's the place where the material of your house decays at a faster rate. That's where the part of your foundation gets rot, you know, or the paint peels in that corner. You never can know why there's a drip in that ceiling. Um, as a, Why there as opposed to anywhere else? Um, material breaks down at a decomposes at a faster manner in a negative portal so it will um that's another way to find them people don't really like to be around them too so clutter tends to collect there and you want to definitely clean the clutter um out of that space to um to do that to you know keep the energy flowing through that place and it's really good um yeah go ahead ask a question honey desiree go ahead anything you want um, it's really good to do, uh, um, normal, like every month or two, do a space clearing, get your sage out and go around your whole house and sage everything too. That will help it, um, clear. So that's it. Um, that's, I think what I've got for today, unless anyone has any questions. Desiree, you want to jump in there with a question or anybody else? Um, I think that's all that I, I want to say. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. When finding lines, vortexes, et cetera, and you have an attic. Um, so the vortex go, will go, it's, they're very tall. So if you have a vortex in your house, it's going to be in the basement. It's going to be on the first floor, second floor, and the attic. They go vertically through the, through your entire house. It's not just going to be on one floor. So that's a really good, um, good point, Desiree. Um, and you're going to have to take care of it on all those levels, you know, it's, it, it's going to go through your entire house unless you have a single floor house with no basement, um, where if it's in the attic, um, you're going to, it's going to come up on your map. And then when you get into your attic, you can go around with either your pendulum or your dowsing rods and just check. Like I, I walk around with my pendulum out kind of out like this or the dowsing rods. And I'm like, Okay, where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is, you know, and the pendulum will start swinging. So that's basically um, that's basically how you deal with it. Oh, yeah, selenate is really good. There's a whole bunch of crystals, flower essences. Um, I love the flower essences called um, Petal Tones. Petal Tones has a space clearing set, and they're not taken internally. Um, they're, we use them in the environment. They have a little mini space clearing set that has clear light, astral clear, um, and, and some, a few other ones that are fantastic for, um, space clearing. So I really like those. So, 
Um, Badra says if a person dies of natural causes, I don't think so. I mean, not generally. I mean, if the person suffered a lot, like I'll, it's more like residual energy. So if a person dies in the house, you want to check for residual energy. Residual energy is just like the leftover human emotional goo that we have. So I, when I was house hunting, like walked into a room um, and I, somebody had died there and I didn't feel the spirit of that person, but I felt this like layer of depression and pain. And I was like, wow, whoever died here was actually, um, really sick and depressed before they died and that their spirit wasn't there, but the depression and illness and pain and feeling of misery lingered. And that's, you can clean, you know, you can clear that stuff out. And it's really, really good to do that because we don't want to live in residual energy. It's like leftover goo left from other people. Oh, say, okay. So you live in an apartment building. Yeah. With a basement and three floors of apartments, the, the portals are going to go through all of them. They're like, they're, they're really like chakras, you know what I mean? So like, if you think about the chakra in your body, it, it starts in the back of your spine in the central current and it goes all the way out through your energy field like a big ice cream cone. And that's what the portals do. They start in the ground and they go up or out this way, like, a, um, like the, generally they're kind of up and down and cone shaped like that. Sometimes I've seen them this way, but mostly they're like that. And it's gonna go through that. And you're going to do some community service for your entire apartment building. If you, you can work wherever you are. So if you're on the second floor, you're going to work on closing the portal and just set the intention to close it through the whole building. And that will be great um, community service <laughs> for the people, the rest of the people who live in your apartment, even though they may never know that you did it. Um, yeah, so there you go. I hope that helps. It was a cool topic. Thanks for um, bringing it up, and we will see you back here next time, um, next Friday at noon Eastern time. And if you have other questions or topic um, you want to keep talking in the thread um, and you missed this or you're watching it, the, re um, the review of it, um, the video afterwards, just put your question in there, and I'll keep answering questions. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks.